Good morning. I am Major Alex Carlier, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. Throughout the ceremony, cues to stand or be seated will be given. Today's ceremony is being conducted as an outdoor event. Therefore, during the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes and the National Anthem, military members should stand at attention and salute. During the National Anthem, our civilian guests should place their right hand over their heart. Please silence all electronic devices at this time. Thank you. The ceremony will begin shortly. Good morning. Today, the men and women of the United States European Command pay special tribute to Lieutenant General Stephen L. Basham on the occasion of his retirement from active duty in the United States Air Force. The presiding officer for today's ceremony is General Thomas A. Boussier, Commander, Air Force Global Strike Command. We would like to extend a sincere welcome to the special guests in attendance with us today. Please hold your applause until all guests have been introduced. Lieutenant General Basham's spouse, Mrs. Angie Basham. Their daughters, Lauren and Sarah Basham. Mrs. Basham's sister, Mara Gerard, and her husband, Donald. <laughs> Distinguished visitors attending today are spouse of presiding officer and commander, Air Force Global Strike Command, and Air Force's Strategic Air, U.S. Strategic Command, Mrs. Barbara Boussier. Command Chief Master Sergeant, Air Force Global Strike Command, and Air Force's Strategic Air, U.S. Strategic Command, Chief Master Sergeant, Sean M. Aiello, and his spouse, Mrs. Tabitha Aiello. Commander, United States European Command, and Supreme Allied Commander Europe, General Christopher G. Cavoli, and his spouse, Christina. Command Senior Enlisted Leader, United States European Command, Command Sergeant Major Robert V. Abernathy, and his spouse Angela. Commander United States Africa Command, General Michael E. Langley. Commander United States Army Forces in Europe and Africa, General Darrell A. Williams. Commander United States Air Forces in Europe and United States Air Forces Africa, General James B. Hecker. Command Senior Enlisted Leader, United States Air Forces in Europe and United States Air Forces Africa, Chief Master Sergeant Randy Kwiatkowski. Civilian Deputy to the Commander, United States European Command and Foreign Policy Advisor, Ambassador Kate Burns and her spouse Scott. Deputy Commander, United States Special Operations Command, Lieutenant General Sean M. Farrell. Switzerland Ministry of Defense for Security Policy, Ambassador Paul V. Pooley. Commander of Ground Base Air Defense Brigade 33, Brigadier General Peter Zoller. The Duke von Württemberg, Duke Michael Herzog. Lastly, a special welcome to all general officers, both active and retired, members of the Senior Executive Service, commanders, directors, community partners, members of United States European Command, friends, colleagues, and especially the extended family and special guests of our honoree. Thank you for being here to share this special occasion with Lieutenant General Basham and his family. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes, Presentation of the Colors, and a special performance of the German and U.S. National Anthem provided by the United States Air Forces and Europe Band. Time. 
Thank you, United States European Command Honor Guard and United States Air Forces and Europe Band. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Father Joe will now deliver the invocation. <clears throat> if you may, at this time, you may please all join me in praying. Almighty God, it is with grateful hearts that we pause on this day to give you thanks for the 36 years of faithful service that Lieutenant General Stephen Lamont Basham has given to our beloved country. We thank you for the long-term contribution he has made and for his loyalty to our Air Force family and his benevolence and servant leadership and his willingness to share his experience and wisdom with others daily. But we also realize, oh God, that these accomplishments would be impossible without the help and loving support of his lovely wife and best friend of 36 years, Angie, his parents, father, Riley Basham, and mother of blessed memory, Alpha Jean, children, Sarah and Lauren, Sister-in-law, Maura Gerard, and her husband, Donald. Sister-in-law, Anita Flannor, and her husband, Hall Ford. Mother-in-law, Joe Flannon. Siblings, Greg and Kerry Basham, and Lana Campbell. And the litanies of family members, friends, and numerous past and present supervisors who have supported him over the years. Today, we pray your continued blessing over Lieutenant General Bash and Angie, as they transition to begin the next phase of their life in Bowling Green, Kentucky. May your presence be with them as they choose new paths and walk 
new horizons to explore in retirement. And oh God, after resting for a while, bless them, guide them, and lead them forward with your strength and wisdom. Surround them in retirement with folks who will continue to uplift them the joys of retirement. Oh God, we also ask your blessings upon our officiating officer today, General Bouzier. Bless all our senior leaders and senior enlisted leaders and mission partners and distinguished guests all present here today and those watching from around the world. Bless all those who have walked behind the scene for the success of today's ceremony. Grant a safe passage to all those who have traveled here today. And oh God, we pray that please gently whisper into Bash and Angie's heart tonight, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in few things. I will put you now in charge of many things more in retirement. Come and share in the joys of rest. We ask all these in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Father Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my privilege to introduce the commander, Air Force Global Strike Command, General Thomas A. Boussier. Chaplain, that was awesome. Thank you. So good morning. So uh, Bash said that uh, because of my jet lag, I only had two hours to talk this morning. So I'll, I'll try to get it down to 90 minutes, Bash. So uh, I'd like to extend my welcome also to the senior leaders here today, General and Mrs. Caboli. It's great uh, having dinner with you last night. Thank you for being here. Command Sergeant Major, thank you. Ambassador, I love saying that. Let's all say it together. Ambassador, that's such a cool, cool title. Uh, to my senior leaders on the left-hand side, uh, General Langley, it is so good to see you. General Langley and I had the privilege of serving together on the Joint Staff. It seems like yesterday, but it was a decade ago. Um, General Williams, good to see you. And uh, Scorch, Scorch and I were, uh, were crazy captains together many, many years ago. And just for the record, General Cavoli, I don't have a band. Just for the record. <laughs> to all of the other uh, senior enlisted leaders, uh, joint partners, allies, and friends of Team Basham, thank you for taking the time to come out and be part of this ceremony. And uh, for everyone that's on uh, the virtual uh, live stream, thank you for coming in, uh, tuning in from around the world to honor Angie and Bash, Lauren and Sarah, and the wonderful family that is represented before us today. Now, I'd be remiss and I'd get in trouble if I didn't also thank my spouse, Barbara, so everyone say, good morning, Barbara. <laughs> and my uh, steely-eyed wingman, uh, Command Sergeant Major and Mrs. Aiello, thank you for being here. All right, so we're going to go on a journey, uh, if you'll allow me. It's going to be a little bit different. You all have the bios of Bash and Angie, of what they've done for the last 36 years. But I'm going to try to wrap it with probably a little bit of why people are dialing in and here today um, to honor 36 years of service. There's a lot of things that I know about Steve Basham that he doesn't want me to talk about right now. But we're going to talk about what Steve and Angie have done for our Department of Defense, what they have done for our Air Force, and what they have done for our nation in the last three plus decades. And I'd offer to you, there's no better place to do it than here. Right here at Patch Barracks, closing out his time as the Deputy Commander of, I would have to say, one of the most important, if not the most important, combatant command in our nation's history at this time. So thank you, sir, for your leadership and thank you for building a team that included Steve Basham. So 36 years ago, you know, I don't even know where Kentucky is. But apparently, they grew and graduated the officer we see before us. Let me tell you about Steve Basham. And I'm not going to talk about the bios of being at uh, B-1 training or Laughlin or going to Grand Forks or going to Ellsworth or going to Whiteman 
or going to school, Army War College, we were Army uh, War College uh, um, together. We were a lot of things together, by the way. And I'll try to give you a sense of the things that uh, he's most proud of, at least I am most proud of, of his service in the Air Force. You know, I'm not going to talk about his time on the Hill as our legislative liaison or his time in Pacific Commander in your, uh, U.S. Forces Korea um, or actually in European Command. What I'm going to talk about is the reason so many people admire and respect Steve and Angie. And I'll tell you, I first ran into Steve in 1996 when I went to Whiteman Air Force Base after he did. So that was the initial stages of fielding the most exquisite weapon system ever built by human hands, and that's the B-2 stealth bomber. Brand new. And young Captain Steve Basham was selected in the first tranche as an initial cadre into the B-2 program, a year before I got invited in. So when I got there, I first met Steve and Angie. But that's not enough, right? The fact that he was selected to be part of that team in the initial stages is an indication that I would offer to you that you all know to be true. If you know Steve and Angie, you all know to be true, whether he's a captain or a lieutenant general. He was the youngest aviator that we picked. When it came time to pick the first pilot in the first airplane to fly combat in a stealth platform that we, quite frankly, didn't know if it worked, and it does, by the way. <laughs> Who did we pick? The first airplane, the first pilot, the first combat mission, right here in your theater, Steve Basham. And that was the beginning of a stage of a history of a record of first that we in the United States Air Force could not be more proud of. So he went on from the B-1 as the first combat aviator, highly decorated for his service in the B-1, to being the first senior leader in the Air Force to be checked out in the B-1, the B-2, and the B-52. So when we have tough jobs, we call Steve Basham. You might recall, and I don't want to dwell on it now, it kind of is a little emotional for me, but we had a little emotional event in 2007 in our Department of the Air Force. In fact, next month is the 15th anniversary of my command standing up because of that significant emotional event in our Air Force. You can ask Mr. Google if you don't know what it is. And who was the person we picked to go lead the fifth bomb wing and the second bomb wing through that adversity, through that challenging time, Steve Basham. We sent him to Whiteman, or uh, to the fifth bomb wing up at Minot Air Force Base as the vice commander, literally months after that event. And then right after that, we sent him down to Barksdale to be the second bomb wing commander to stand up and be the host installation commander for Air Force Global Strike Command. And I, I know he's very fond of those years. And then we trained him and we educated him. We went to some different schools. But then when it was time to pick a senior leader to represent us on the Hill, twice, by the way, he did it as an 06 and as a two-star, and the House and then the overall Senate liaison for the Department of the Air Force. And you all know why, because you know Steve Basham. Is there anyone that is more engaged and more polite than Steve? Angie may have a different opinion of that, but. <laughs> so we want to make sure whether it's in combat, in leadership in our most important wings, or on the Hill with our oversight committee members and staffers, we want to send someone that is engaged and credible and has the reputation to carry forth the water of the Department of the Air Force and now the Department of Defense. There is no better steward and ambassador. And then it came time to send someone to USAFE and then UCOM. Steve's background, his experience in the Nuke Enterprise, his 
ability to deal with various difficult, adverse situations is the reason that he has been here for so long. There's a lot, I hear there's a lot going on in your AOR, General. And I know you're sad to lose Steve and Angie. But here's what I'll tell you. Our nation is better because of his service. Our joint team and coalition team is better because of his service. Our Air Force is better because of his service. And I will tell you, I'm better because of my ability to serve with Bash and Angie. Now, today is just a transition, right? We say it's a retirement. We all give hugs and kisses, and apparently we're going to eat cookies. But today is a transition where not only the Department of Defense, the Joint Team, and the Air Force gets to benefit from Steve and Angie's leadership and love, but now their hometown, their home state, and our civilian partners across the fabric of the United States are now going to benefit from his wisdom, his calm, steady hand, and his love for our service. So join me now in thanking Steve and Angie for their outstanding service to our nation. All right, Bash, let's make this official. Thank you, General Boussier. Lieutenant General Basham, please join General Boussier center stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the medal citation. Publish your orders. Attention to orders. Lieutenant General Stephen L. Basham, United States Air Force, distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious service and a duty of great responsibility as Deputy Commander, United States European Command, from July 2022 to July 2024. During his tenure, he oversaw the establishment and operations of Security Assistance Group Ukraine, guided the humanitarian response and support of Turkey following a 7.8 magnitude earthquake, and balanced the competing demands of assuring North Atlantic Treaty Organization allies. He directly oversaw United States European Command's response to the Greece wildfires in July 2023, providing three UH-60 Blackhawk helicopters supporting fire suppression. General Basham focused on creating an efficient and capable warfighting headquarters, oversaw the transfer of Combatant Command Authority of Israel from United States European Command to United States Central Command, and ensured closer integration between the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe. Additionally, he led United States European Command efforts to plan and execute Operation Enduring Welcome to support Afghan refugees applying for special immigrant visas. The distinctive accomplishments of General Basham culminate a long and distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Lloyd J. Austin, Secretary of Defense. Please remain standing for the reading of the retirement order. Publish your order. Attention to orders. Department of the Air Force, Washington, District of Columbia, Special Order Number ACG 000047, dated the 7th of March, 2024. Lieutenant General Stephen L. Basham, Deputy Commander, Headquarters, U.S. European Command, is retired from active duty on the first day of September, 2024, after more than 36 years of faithful and honorable duty. By order of the Secretary of the Air Force, proceed to your home of selection. Signed, Brigadier General Bridget V. Gigliotti. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
General Boussier will now present Lieutenant General Basham with a certificate of retirement, which reads, Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all, how shall, to all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that Lieutenant General Stephen L. Basham, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Air Force on the first day of September, 2024. Signed, General David W. Alvin, Air Force Chief of Staff. Lieutenant General Basham, we are pleased to present you with a presidential certificate which reads, Certificate of Appreciation for Service in the Armed Forces of the United States of America to Lieutenant General Stephen L. Basham. I extend my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication in our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor, and country, in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world, embodied the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You represent the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Signed, Joseph Biden, Commander-in-Chief. Lieutenant General Basham will now be presented with his Air Force retiree pen by his wife. Mrs. Basham, please join us on stage. Thank you, Mrs. Basham. Please remain on stage. General Boussier will now present Mrs. Basham with the Distinguished Public Service Medal. The citation reads, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Distinguished Public Service Medal is awarded to Mrs. Angela Basham. Mrs. Angela Basham distinguished herself through exceptionally superior service through a succession of extraordinary contributions to the soldiers, civilians, and families of the United States European Command communities from 1 August 2022 to 15 July 2024. Mrs. Basham served in various positions and roles ranging from family readiness, senior advisor to the United States European Command, to volunteering with the Stuttgart Spouses Club, and as a senior representative to the German American Wives Club. Mrs. Basham's efforts led to a measurable increase in the family satisfaction surveys for the command. Her spirit of volunteerism and her ability to organize programs in support of an already busy command significantly increased the morale of the Stuttgart military community. Mrs. Basham helped award over $100,000 worth of continuing education scholarships to family members of the community. Mrs. Basham, excuse me, in her dedication to mission greatly increased Department of Defense support for service members and their families living overseas. The distinctive accomplishments of Mrs. Basham are in keeping with the finest traditions of the public service and reflect great credit upon herself, the United States European Command, and the Department of Defense. It is our honor to present Mrs. Basham with an Air Force Certificate of Appreciation for the support she has provided during her husband's career. The certificate reads, in grateful appreciation, the United States Air Force presents this certificate of recognition to Mrs. Angela F. Basham for the commitment and numerous contributions that made positive impacts to the nation's defense. Thank you for your support, which gave strength and purpose to your spouse's service. Given this first day of September, 2024, signed General David W. Alvin, Air Force Chief of Staff.
General Boussier, Lieutenant General, and Mrs. Basham, you may now be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the United States European Command Honor Guard will conduct a sacred flag folding ceremony by presenting Lieutenant General Stephen Basham with a symbol of his 36 years of dedication to the United States of America. This flag was flown on board Grimm 51, a 24-hour cross-combatant command mission approved by Lieutenant General Basham and originating from Royal Air Force Station Fairford, United Kingdom. During this mission, the crew of Grimm 51 overflew Houthi-controlled surface-to-air threats in northern Yemen while working to build stronger partnerships through airborne integration with Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the United Kingdom. For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternating between seven red and six white and that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. White signifies purity and innocence and blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans both at home and abroad. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was so moved at seeing the stars and stripes waving after the British shelling off Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to the Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance, our most famous flag salute and patriotic oath. In July 1969, the American flag was flown in space when Neil Armstrong planted it on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on military installations that circle our globe, on the fin flash of an aircraft in harm's way, and on the deck of destroyers patrolling the seas. Indeed, it flies in the heart of every military member who serves our great nation. The sun never sets on our U.S. military, nor on the flag we so proudly cherish. Since 1776, no generation of Americans has been spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's service members remain committed to preserving the freedom that others won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all. Long may it wave. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and distinct honor to introduce Lieutenant General Stephen L. Basham, United States Air Force, retired. Okay, so you know, I took my watch off because as the UCOM staff knows, I have a tendency to go long. So I'm gonna put it here and probably never look at it the entire time I'm up here. <laughs> wow. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I, I, uh, I'd love to apologize because it's so hot, but it's Germany and um, 
We don't control the weather. Uh, it has a mind of its own. Uh, this is probably one of those times when uh, those that are seated are kind of bummed that they were seated, and those that are standing are really excited that they're standing because uh, they can always work toward the, work toward the shade. I, I, uh, I'm going to treat today as a day of thank you, and, and uh, please bear with me. I'm going to do my best to get through this pretty quick, and I, I understand the challenge, but, but uh, I will always look back on this day if, if I failed to, to do something I thought was right, and I'll, 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 I'll not be able to sleep at night. So let me do a couple of things here if you don't mind. And, and again, today is a day of, of thank yous. I'm going to start off with the most important thank you, and it's someone that um, really put this together. He is someone that I am so proud that he's still with UCOM. Uh, Mr. Michael Bruce, we all know him as JB. And it's, it's, it's through his effort, through his relationship with the community, and, and quite honestly, through his team building inside this command, uh, that we now have a, not only a world-class executive service, but we have a world-class leader. So if we could do a round of applause for JB. I'm going to recognize a couple of the folks as well. As a matter of fact, uh, Heather Saltgaver, she's uh, Saltgaver. She's actually the one that uh, put this all together as far as the planning. Uh, Alex, thank you so much. Um, you, you never know exactly who your narrator is going to be. Uh, obviously, they say he volunteered. Uh, I'm confident uh, that's not quite true, <laughs> but that's a, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I have to say to the USAFE band, uh, uh, General Hecker, thank you. Uh, thanks for letting them be here today. Uh, they always, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, if you don't get just a little bit uh, choked up, just a little bit of something in the back of your throat, um, uh, when you hear uh, our, uh, an actual band play, uh, then, then you're just, you may not be alive. So uh, go see a doc. Uh, but uh, to our USAFE band, thanks. Certainly to the honor guard, to the proffers, to the escorts, uh, to those that set this place up and will take it back down, and they've done that multiple times to make sure that we could do this. I, I, um, I was intent on having the, the uh, retirement, uh, or as my sister-in-law Mara calls it, my graduation. Um, I, I was intent on having it out here. I love this building. I, actually, I love this J-Mall. Uh, I, I love the fact that we now have food trucks that come and sit over here and people gather out here uh, throughout a busy day. I love telling people about these barracks right here. I love te telling people about these buildings right here, which they all wonder back. So this was built back in 1936 uh, uh, by, by the uh, Germans. It's uh, a Kleber, not, not Kleber concern, but Kermacher concern at that, at that point in time. And I, people always wonder what, man, what, wonder what that headquarter was like back then, because we know how it is as a U.S. headquarter, but I wonder what it was like as a German headquarter. Well, it wasn't a German headquarter. This was actually the dining facility back, back then. So uh, the decisions made back then were probably more consequential than some of the decisions I make inside that building today. I do find great humor that, that the, there used to be a much larger building over there. Uh, and, and as a bomber pilot, I have to reflect on the fact that the reason that building is no longer there is because uh, one of our U.S. bomb groups came through and and bombed that on 1 April 1945. So if they could have just waited a few more days, we might have had a much, much larger building. Let me also say thanks to Father Joe. Now, Father Joe is from uh, Nigeria. He's uh, the, the, uh, the, the priest down at, uh, uh, or up at Ramstein. Uh, he is one that actually touched Angie and I by, beyond belief. Uh, and, and it was clear that we had to have him here today. And I'm so thankful, Father Joe, that, that you're here. Uh, as a Catholic priest, he throws us off just a little bit because for those, those that are Catholic, uh, you know that the Mass is going to be one hour. One hour. That's it. And by the way, you know when to speak. You know when to sit down, stand up, all the cues. Father Joe doesn't play that game. <laughs> it's an interactive Mass. Uh, and you're just hoping he doesn't walk down your aisle because you're going to get a question. Uh, he is absolutely, and he has a story. He has a story. 
uh, and it's truly an amazing story. So, Father Joseph, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm going to get a little bit faster as I go through these, so I apologize, but there are two individuals I have to start out with. Uh, General Cavoli, Christina, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for, well, first of all, when you were at Army Europe, as a, as a three-star, clearly going to be a four-star, and then clearly going to be coming this, this way, uh, you were always very kind to me uh, as the deputy commander for USAFE. I remember going on a, a staff ride with you, absolutely amazing. I realized right then this is a guy I would love to work for, uh, did not know I would work for you. And then ultimately, I, I, can't, I can't say thanks enough for the, the uh, a little autonomy, sometimes too much autonomy, uh, but you really have allowed us to, to kind of s spread our wings. This is truly the best uh, deputy commander job out there. If you're going to be the deputy commander for combat command, go to USUCOM. Uh, Christina, thank you for being such a great friend also. Uh, and, and, and while we never really got to spend all the time we wanted with you, thank you for inviting uh, the spouses up to the chateau. Thanks for welcoming them in. And thanks for every time you, you came down here. Uh, it was just a pleasure, pleasure spending time with you. Uh, and thanks for all that you do for our command as well. Okay, to General Boussier and, and uh, Barbara, or is Barb okay? I just don't know that. Uh, so, uh, again, I was actually Barb's softball coach at, at one point in time. We went, the, went to the base championship and won it all, won it all. Barb is a phenomenal, phenomenal softball player. I mean, just an athlete all around. Angie was on that team, too. <laughs> you said no Kentucky jokes, but you didn't, you didn't say no joking, so... Oh, well, that'll test a marriage right there. Yeah. <laughs> Angela, let me show you how to keep score. I think you're going to like that. Um, but, but we. <laughs> Unfortunately, true. The, uh, um, so let me, I'm just going to fill in one piece. Uh, 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 General Boosie, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Thank you for coming here, you and Barb. Uh, you mean the world to us. It was clear to me when we made the decision that, that this was the time there was no other person I was going to ask. No other person I was going to ask. Uh, and, and, and if you'd said no, uh, General Cavoli, you'd be really busy and hot sitting up there today. So you're very happy. So, um, but but uh, let me just fill in a little bit of phenomenal leader. Came to the B2 program as a major. He's actually the first director of operations in the lead squadron, the 393rd Bomb Squadron which has lineage all the way back to uh, dropping the atomic bomb August 6, 1945. By the way, I was born on August 6, 1945, just 20, 20 years later, and I was fortunate enough to be the, the uh, commander of that same squadron. But there's a reason why I was actually on that first B-2 mission. It's because that's the guy that actually picks them. And uh, for different reasons that we won't talk about, um, I have no idea why, why my name came up, but, but all of a sudden my life uh, changed after, after that. And a few other events too. So uh, General Boussier also had a vendetta. I told it last night, you know, he, he was doing his best to get someone as the company grade officer of the court. He wanted a pilot to, to win it because they just didn't win it. So um, he, I happened to do something that made me stand out for one quarter, which was rare for me as General Cavoli knows. The, uh, and, 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 and Bra ends up uh, writing up something, and I win. And then uh, he says, well, I got a quarter. I'm going to get a year. And, and that's where his integrity really got checked because, <laughs> quite honestly, I don't know who he wrote about, but, but the guy ended up winning. Uh, and it, it really did change our, our life. And you've been a dear friend uh, and a mentor and someone uh, probably the best leader in the United States Air Force right now because you call it like it is. And I can think of a better person to be in charge of our nuclear program, so thank you. Okay, to General Langley, uh, thank you for being here. General Williams, thank you. General Hecker, thank you. Uh, when I realized all of you were here, you can't imagine how nervous I, I became uh, because I know what's going on in Africa. I know what's going on in Europe, um, and, and I know how busy your jobs are. Uh, but it means an awful lot that, as a matter of fact, that you would, would come and spend time with uh, Angie and I, and, and, and I, I thank you. Um, I have to actually also say to uh, Chief Master Sergeant Kowatowski, thank you for being here. 
Okay, you've always been a great friend, and I, I couldn't, be, couldn't have been happier when I found out you were going to be the, the command chief. Uh, uh, chief Mass Sergeant ALO, I think right, right here. Thank you also for being here. I can only imagine how busy your life is with multiple locations that you have to travel around to you and your wife. Thank you also for, for visiting with us today. Uh, I'm going to hit a couple of other folks. Uh, Steve and Alyssa, thank you. These are our, kind of our our uh, street mates here. So we we have a very interesting kind of a loop down in there, and it, it actually works out pretty well. Um, uh, there have been a lot of been a lot of late nights just to try and recover from a, a busy week, and, and Steve and Alyssa are fantastic. As a matter of fact, I for those of you who know me, I I occasionally like bourbon, occasionally, and uh, so does Alyssa. Whew. Bob Softy, G-Man, Adrian, thank you for being here also. These are the components of USUCOM, if you want to know where the, the uh, work. And, and actually, Larry, I think you're over, over here somewhere. Larry, thank you for being here. Uh, and Admiral Munch the other day, very kind words on the BTC. I really appreciate that. And to Admiral Munch, please uh, pass, my, pass my thanks. Uh, General Tony Agudo could not be here today. He's actually running uh, uh, Security Assistance Group Ukraine. He is, he is truly the busiest man in this theater, with the exception of maybe the guy who runs uh, NATO military as well as USUCOM, General Hicker, or, or General um, Cavoli. But, but he gave me a quick call this morning, and I appreciate the friendship that we've developed. Sean, thanks for being here. Uh, Sean Farrell, actually with uh, uh, SOCOM, Deputy Commander. John, I, I see you sitting over there too. Thanks you for coming in from uh, AFRICOM as well. By the way, AFRICOM's five miles away, so I <laughs> it actually works out. It works out great. All right, Kate Burns, Scott. This is truly my my uh, partner in crime. Uh, Kate Burns has no kidding been a, a godsend to this to this command because of what she actually does as a civilian deputy. The, the ability to be able to not only help us in understanding policy uh, as a former ambassador, she understands exactly what it takes to do things just a little bit different every now and then. So, Kate, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. We're going to spend a lot more time together. Another couple we're going to spend a lot of time with is Rob and Angela Abernathy. Uh, we, uh, about part of the way through, we moved the Abernathys also down to the, to the circle. And it's the best thing that, that we really could have, have done because, you know, prior to that, I, I was always known as either Lieutenant General Basham or Bash. Uh, I've been called a lot of names in my, in my life. I'm going to say it. Is that okay? I'm going to say it. Um, one day I was walking outside and I heard this little voice yelling, Captain Underpants! Captain Underpants! I will forever be known by your children as Captain Underpants. I, I haven't watched the video. I don't know anything about it. And I'm not going to either. So... Um, <laughs> You're wonderful friends, and I can't wait to spend more time with you. Also, a connoisseur of, of bourbon. He, he moved his bourbon in the house. He kept it out on the back patio. Wise, wise choice. Uh, Pete Casey. Uh, uh, absolutely one of the hardest working uh, chiefs of staff I've ever seen, if not also inside UCOM. Uh, you are an amazing leader. Casey, uh, you are an independent spirit. You, you, and I mean that because every now and then people go, yeah, Casey's traveling again. And I'm so good you're, I, I'm so happy you are because if you left it up to Pete to travel, you would never travel anywhere in, inside Europe. But, but you two have been great friends of ours as well. So thank you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, Aaron, there you are. We, we can't, we'll, we'll get to Iceland, I assume. You, you probably wish you were there right now, don't you? Uh, Aaron Sawyer is the uh, Deputy Chief of Mission at, at uh, Iceland. Chaps, it's so good to have you, you here. Darius, I really do. Uh, the Deputy Commander at uh, JSEC, Joint Sustainment Enabling uh, Command. Uh, he and I, I wish we'd had more time together because I think you, along with General Ken up here, we could set the, set the theater. And then I'm going to just right now touch on the many directors that are gathered here, the division chiefs, the branch chiefs, uh, those that are actually doing the work, the action officers in USUCOM, uh, and, and to all of our national liaison representatives and to all those from many countries that are gathered here today, thank you. I really, I am really honored by your presence. I got to switch my thank yous to a couple of folks that are mentors that have actually uh, uh, 
also been a part of us being here today. One is General Dave Goldfein, his wife Dawn, previous chief staff of the Air Force. I was just talking to him the other day, as a matter of fact, to try and, okay, how does this transition thing work? I was also uh, pleased to get an email from Dr. Heather Wilson. She was the Secretary of the Air Force uh, at the same time with General Goldfein. Uh, she sent me a very nice, gave me a very nice note when I departed. She says, other than uh, Dave Goldfein, uh, I, you're, you're the one officer that I've spent more time with than anyone else inside the Air Force because she understood how to work the Hill. She understood how to use her legislative liaison, and I appreciate the fact that she mentored me along the way. I also have to thank General Hawk Carlisle, his wife Jillian. He's a Scotch drinker, but we don't hold that against him. His wife's from Scotland, so he has to, he has to be. Um, the funny story about Hawk Carlisle one time is he brings his wife. She drank her Scotch with Diet Coke, which is fine. You, you do you. Um, he didn't think it was right, so he actually would not bring her, one time he tried, to, to bring her the low-grade scotch with her Diet Coke. She took one sip and she says, you'll never do that again. <laughs> so evidently you can taste the difference. A um, couple more folks. Uh, Rock, where are you? Raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, Brigadier General Rock, uh, Al, uh, I'll say Alan Rock, retired. Good friends of ours came also to USAFE, and, and I, I look forward to spending more time with him down in Louisiana. A couple of folks that aren't here, Bill and Sharon Lublin, uh, our mentors on the joint staff in the same office that uh, Bill had down inside the Pentagon. Truly a good friend, and, and, and we look forward to visiting them too. Doug and Diane Carpenter, our B1 days there. Uh, he's now a retired colonel flying for Delta, and we look forward to seeing them. Matt and Kim Grant. Uh, Followed kind of the same path with trying to start a family like, like Angie and I, but they were also our good friends early days of the, of the B-1. To our German friends that are here, Duke Michael, thank you. This is an individual that you really want to spend some time with. First of all, he donates the Christmas tree every single year. If AFRICOM doesn't, he gets one to, for UCOM and AFRICOM. If AFRICOM doesn't show up, you get the little tree. AFRICOM showed up the next year, you got the big trees. <laughs> uh, but, but Duke, it's so wonderful having you here. And, and, and by the way, uh, thank you. Thank you for being a part of this family. Uh, I'm going to hit a couple of folks out here because they're all kind of tight. Uh, Oliver and Bernard uh, sitting over there together. I, Bernard, I see Annette's not here with you. By the way, please tell her I said, I said hello, and, and, and we've enjoyed spending so much time with you. And uh, Oliver, I still owe you another, another round of beer, so we'll get together. Uh, to Roland, I saw you sitting here, invited us in from the Mesa uh, and let us kind of see the operation that you have out there. You do a phenomenal job uh, bringing companies into this city, but also by embracing the military. So thank you. Uh, to Sibylle and Lothar, this is our dinner group. So uh, the other night we went to a nice German or a, a Greek restaurant because Sibylle sets up every month for the families a place where we can go and eat. Uh, and, and this was just an absolutely re fantastic restaurant, as they all are, and I took family back the other day. So thank you for being here as, as well. Uh, to Teresa, there you are, thank you. I'm so sorry that Jorg is not here. Uh, please uh, tell him, we, uh, from the bottom of our heart, we look forward to seeing him again one day. An absolutely amazing cook. You really want to get her preserves or just go to her restaurant. It's her house, but she, she will probably feed you if you show up there. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Marcus and Julia Besser may, there you are right there. So, by the way, I took him through 11 Ogelstrasse the other day. He works right across the street from 11 Ogelstrasse, which is a very nice, was a resident, actually built into a German bunker in, um, in the downtown Stuttgart area. He's a lawyer, walks by it every single day, had no idea what was inside there. Uh, it's a pretty amazing, amazing place. And, and they've in, invited us into their home for a wonderful dinner as well. So thanks, thanks as well. Uh, Gabriella Schaefer, thank you. This, uh, we, we met at the German American Center, which really promotes education, uh, bringing students from the US over here. Uh, I just happened to sit down with her to have a, have a meal. She didn't know who she was, uh, and then we, we hit it off. And she's an amazing, amazing person and, and so intelligent. And it means so much that you would actually actually spend time one more time with us. And we're still thinking if we can get the 29th or 30th. We will find you. Don't worry. We'll always know where you are. So thank you. 
Uh, I do have to say, Kevin and Fabia, I'm not sure if they were going to make it. There they are. All right, so who, whoever's been by a house, um, and you've seen this really big table, um, Kevin and Fabia own a furniture store called Unique Furniture, and uh, we went in several times and then finally made, it a, made a decision to, to purchase um, this table. And then they brought it, because they were down at Ramstein, they actually brought it here. As they were bringing it in, three guys bring it in, by the way, they said, this is the biggest table we've ever sold. I'm going, you sold me the biggest table you've ever sold. It only weighs about 700 pounds. That's without the base, by the way. Uh, you, you can imagine what the movers uh, felt like when they had to come back in and take that out of the, out of the house. I will tell you, I, I get more compliments on that as well as compliments on your old fashioned, Kevin. So uh, we consider you now to be dear friends and we look forward to actually opening a store in the US. Angie and I will be running your unique furniture store in Kentucky. <laughs> Trust me, in Kentucky, it'll, oh, I almost did it. I didn't do it yet. Yeah. It'll be a fine furniture store, we'll just say that. <laughs> that was close, that was close. Uh, by the way, to my entire family out there, this is, uh, I have to see them in about two weeks, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. Uh, I, I'm not sure Hiltrude, um, yeah. Uh, Hiltrude Thaisen, uh, Shmea, uh, lost her husband, husband recently. And she's a, she's a dear friend of Angie's, of the German American uh, Wives Club. And, and quite honestly, uh, someone that, that if you can just spend a few minutes with her, she will, she will warm your heart. So uh, please, uh, please pass on our, our very best. Okay, this is where it gets quicker. The front office team, Major Stephanie McCarran and her new husband, Alex Olson. Jonathan Chavez, who was my uh, previous aide-de-camp, and his wife, Heather, um, I, I couldn't have two better aide-de-camps, and I'm finishing up with a phenomenal aide-de-camp in, in uh, Stephanie. Thank you so much, because you t have taken care of, quite honestly, as legal as you can make it, me and Angie, and you're absolutely amazing. Uh, to Julian Gollin, who's just coming in, and Brian Love, who departed as my 06XO, to Jeremy Heron, uh, and, and who is now kind of inherited into the office, to James Harris's wife, Beta, uh, where Wonderful. He's a, he's a former Marine, always a Marine, uh, and now he's come back in to serve with us. Thank you. To Amanda, so good to see you here. I can't believe we let AFRICOM steal you away. John, take good care of her. I know you, I know you will. And to Tech Sergeant John Siong, uh, John is actually stationed in Korea now. He actually uh, came back. We, we did the paperwork. It's all legal. Um, I, I'm without an aide-de-camp. As a matter of fact, I've been making my own food. Okay, let's be clear. Angie's been making all my own food. Uh, I, I'm losing weight. I was happy to have John back for a few days. I'll start to gain again. Um, he, he really surprised us. Now I'm going to say thanks to our Kentucky family. Uh, I'm a Sigma Chi. Angie's an Alpha Delta Pi, AD Pi. We're both WKU Hilltoppers. Uh, those are Greek letters, by the way. Most of you don't recognize those. And uh, fraternal organization that we are... They, it, as a matter of fact, the Sigma Chi fraternity uh, kind of changed my life as well. I was an introvert, still a bit of a closet introvert, uh, but it, it taught me how to be a leader, uh, a leader of, of men at that time. Uh, but then when I transitioned the United States Air Force, uh, it, was, it was hopefully to try and be a leader of people. And so I, I look forward to getting back to our fraternity brothers very soon. To a couple of friends that I grew up with, uh, Les Coop, he's, a, he's my dear friend from uh, elementary school all the way into high school, and his mother and father are quite honestly close to being my mother and father, Larry and Sharon Coop. I can't wait to see them again. Danny Vickis is a, a gentleman that, uh, Mr. Southern Kentucky, that's bodybuilding. Uh, he, he won number one in Southern, Mr. Southern Kentucky bodybuilding. The guy's amazing, looked fantastic. I was in that contest too. To my mom and dad, <laughs> uh, my mother's passed away. Uh, my father, we look forward to getting back and being able to spend a little more time with him. Um, uh, they, they obviously hard workers and they put us on the right path. To my brother, Greg, Carrie, and my sister, Lana, uh, we've missed a lot of events. We've missed a lot of events with their children, with them, and the ability to be able to get back and just spend a little bit more time getting to know them. My brother, Greg, was texting me. He's the older one. He was texting me every single day 
just five more days, just four more days, just three more days. He recently retired. I think he was going through withdrawal more than me. So it's his, his therapy. But I look forward to also reconnecting with my younger brother, Kerry. Uh, I've got three uncles that actually served in Vietnam, uh, Sherman, Michael, and David. Um, they all served one year, consequential years as well. Uh, I, I always tell this story, it's probably not true, but only one of them was actually injured. Um, it was my Uncle David because he reached for the, the pot too soon when they were playing poker, got his hand stabbed. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's not true, but it sure tells a, it's a good story with a, with a beverage on. Um, I've got numerous support from aunts, uncles, cousins that have just helped us out so much, and I really do. I really do look forward to getting back to them, and I can't name every single one. There is one uncle that my Uncle Bob uh, not a joke, Uncle Bob, uh, because every Saturday morning he would come and pick me and my brother up, and whatever he was going to go do to a movie or whatever, he would take us around. Uh, it's also someone that was a mentor to me and, and taught me so much. Um, Ken Fleener, Ken and Ann Fleener. Uh, Ken Fleener was a, a Vietnam, he's a fighter pilot in the Vietnam area. He was shot down in uh, 1967. He spent five years in the Hanoi, Hanoi Hilton. And then he uh, came out in 1973, April, and he stayed in the United States military. He checked out in the T-38. He became the base commander and the wing commander at Randolph Air Force Base. He's probably one of the most amazing individuals I've ever met. Uh, he's the one that gave Angie away, gave Mara away. He's the one that actually uh, commissioned me, if you, you see his picture inside that, that program, his wife, Anne, uh, for all that she did while he was a POW and all that that she did after he was a POW. They've been mentors. He's passed away now, of course, with Ann. Uh, their legacy lives, lives on in his son, John Fleener, um, that, that also, by the way, I consider to be the, the, the individual that helped me be here today, to Angie's mother, Joe, that I uh, actually lived with for a few years, uh, a few semesters in college. I, I was trying to figure out how to pay for college and find a place to, to live, and she had an extra bed. Uh, I don't mind saying it's the weirdest thing to actually be hanging out with your girlfriend at her house and then she lives in a dorm so you take your girlfriend back to the house, uh, back to the dorm and then you actually go back to her house and have coffee with her mom <laughs> until you go to work at, at midnight, which, which is, I typically work from 12 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning and then went to class at 8.30. I do not recommend doing that. I do not recommend doing that. Okay, I have to touch on... Uh, uh, Angie's family, as I just talked about, Joe, her father, Francis, uh, for many years was in a, a nursing home and, and, and then had to uh, unfortunately pass away. I never really got to know him, and, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, Anita and Hal, Angie's sister and brother-in-law, not here today, uh, many nephews and nieces. But let me touch on Mar and Donald sitting here. So Donald is, a, uh, first of all, uh, an accomplice, he's Air Force pilot as well accomplished businessman. He's doing very, he has done very well. He, he lives a retired life, but, but uh, ends up staying very, very busy. He's also my fraternity brother. So my brother-in-law and my, and my brother. His wife, Mara, uh, uh, Angie's sister, amazing individual that, that quite honestly, I think has given more to the nation through all the children that she's actually taught than, than I ever gave through here. I have to I'm going to give a couple gifts here in a second, but, but I'm going to go and cover these so I can just do all this and then we'll, we'll be moving on. Uh, to Lauren and Sarah. Wow. Man, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, they took a long time coming along. We'll just, Angie and I didn't have children until we're eight, eight years in, but um, uh, ten, okay, it was 10. <laughs> Math has never been good for me. Um, but but uh, while, while a long story, I'll just tell you, they have just you are truly the the uh, um, the brightness in our day uh, the ability to be able to get just a little bit closer to you Sarah's they both graduated from uh, UVA Sarah has now gone and she's teaching for AmeriCorps program teach for America so proud of you Lauren is starting her master's at UVA here in about uh, a month uh, they have grown into beautiful young women and Angie and I love you love you dearly <clears throat> to Angie uh, Angie and I have been together for really 41 years. We, uh, we didn't date through high school. Uh, I'm a, I'm a go-to-church eight-days-a-week kind of guy. 
Angie, <laughs> she, she was Catholic. The, uh, she, uh, uh, quite honestly, uh, is, the, is the other reason that I'm here today, because she's always been a better spouse of the United States military, United States Air Force, than I've ever been a military member or ever an officer. And she's always been one that kind of kept me on the straight path, but she's always been one to, to volunteer, to be able to do just about anything. And I've, I've not only enjoyed having you as my, my, uh, my, my spouse, mother of my children, uh, but as my, my confidant, my, my friend, and the one who will tell me that you're running way too long. Stop talking. So um, if I could just give a couple of gifts here. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Okay, let's wrap this up. <clears throat> you know, I came to the uh, Air Force to fly. That's, that's really all I wanted to do. However, I quickly learned the privilege of serving. I was thankful to have flown all three bombers, and, and, and it really meant something to, to actually check out and to say I had a check ride in every single one of those bombers. Uh, but I was more honored to have served alongside so many patriots as gathered here today. Without a doubt, we're living in the most consequential times since the Cold War, certainly in my 36 years. And now more than ever, it is time to stand tall with many nations represented here today and not for peace and all that is right and good. We will all look back and know that we had a part in making a difference in the world. And I'm confident in the UCOM team. I'm confident in the NATO team. Under your leadership, General Cavoli, and with this exceptional team that's gathered here today. It has been a privilege serving and I could have not asked for a better military career and way to close out this chapter. I'm grateful to a nation for allowing me to serve. Thank you, Godspeed. Thank you, Lieutenant General Basherman. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, once more, we would like to take this time to thank the men and women of United States European Command for making this a memorable event for Lieutenant General Basham and his family. Please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We welcome you to join General and Mrs. Boussier in a receiving line here in front of the stage to congratulate the Basham family. There will be a reception immediately following in front of the headquarters. Please remain seated until directed to the receiving line by the ushers. Thank